What is this? We have four trucks here today. We have an F-150 standard range, the Cybertruck dual motor, F-150 Ford Lightning Platinum, and the Rivian R1T Quad. We're gonna get uh, a walkthrough of every truck today, and you tell us which one you think is the best electric vehicle truck. But let's get into it. We're gonna do the Rivian R1T first. And you guys probably know who this is. This is Tim, obviously from Tesla under Silicon Valley. He's created a lot of our content for a very long time. So, but he actually has done really well with his social on Rivian. So uh, we joke that uh, he, he switches uh, between lives of the, <laughs> oh my God, Tesla and oh my God, Rivian. But that's neither here nor there. Let's, let's do a walkthrough. So just tell us a little bit what, what trim is this? Uh, what is the starting cost? And then what are the options that you can add up getting to the max price? So this is the launch edition quad motor um, configured as the um, large pack. Um, starting price today is 69900 and goes up into $100,000, which can be configured as a dual motor standard range pack up to a quad motor. Um, large pack, soon max pack, and then you can get max pack for the dual motor um, up to 410 mile range. Wow, that's that's incredible. Uh, let's let's talk a little bit about your front. Can you yeah. open it up and show us? It's uh, filled with adventurous gear, but we got a front here, and then we still got a sub front. If I can find the handle. Oh, Which is so you can get with. further down in there. Yep. And I can turn this into a cooler. There's a drain plug right there. Um, so dirty from all the adventurous trip that I've gone on. Yeah, so if you follow yeah. Oh My God Rivian, you know he's always either at Hollister or just running through puddles somewhere. <laughs> Hollister, Pismo, King Hammers. And and you've you've owned several Teslas. Yep. Uh, how 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 would you say that the front compares? Um, this is probably the largest frunk I've had coming from a Tesla. Um, um, and first OEM power frunk equipped. Oh, wow. Yeah. Can you, can you show us that? Yeah. And, uh, got a bunch around the exterior, just like the yeah. Cybertruck and <laughs> the Lightning. Crazy. All right. Yeah. Well, let's, let's take a look in the back. Yeah. And I assume, are these these standard or do these no, no. come? So that's aftermarket um, ditch lights provided by EV Sport Line or as known as T Sport Line. Um, got them from Zeb Centric. And yeah, they're Crazy. pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely helps out on the adventurous nights. You know, the most um, known feature in the Rivian is the gear tunnel. Right? And you got access all the way through. You got 12 volt. 120 volts on the other side, outlets. Um, oh, wow, so yeah. it, there, there's multiple plugs. Yeah, there's wow. a few plugs. Um, you got storage for your air compressor hose, airline, and this can support up to 250 pounds. So you can just stand on here, no issue, or sit on it. <laughs> I've used it to put my, or my shoes on, my snowboarding, Whatnot. I think people who've said that they have golf clubs, it's a great storage yep. spot for that as well. Yep. Um, we got the OEM power tonneau cover. This is still the original tonneau cover that came with the truck and still works with a little bit of a sand in it from off-roading trips, but still works. And they, they discontinued this for a little bit. Did they bring it back? So right now they're, um, they have a revision. They're slowly uh, retrofitting all the broken ones, and then they're gonna start replacing this one as well uh, eventually, um, soon. Um, but yeah, and then you got soft clothes. As we know, the Rivian is a small four foot bed, but the way that Rivian designed this tailgate is on a gooseneck hinge which extended which extends the bed out to seven feet is there an, like an aftermarket part that you can get the bed extender almost that um, go all the way out or no no okay no but that's uh, huge not, though not, yeah not, to not be able to get seven feet right that's really cool and then yeah. what's this uh 
What's so, that right there? I've uh, rigged this up to <laughs> um, essentially, I bought this reel from Apex Design. Pretty much inflate my tires when I go off-roading. As you see here, this is the OEM tire inflator from Rivian. Hook the hose in, pull the reel out, set my tire pressure and start and then it will inflate to my set tire pressure and this is my version one design so work okay. in progress definitely yeah. is there also any plugs in the back yeah so on that side we have two 110s outlet we also have a 110 as we mentioned in the gear tunnel and another one in the cab um, so a total of four uh 110 outlets that can output uh 1500 watts um is there a 220 no no 220 unfortunately yeah but, no worries yeah <laughs> well yeah, yeah that's the full that's the walkthrough of the bed yeah and then we also have a sub trunk uh, as well that we did not really mention i have a bed mat on here so it's kind of hard to open but so Ooh. this will fit a full-size spare tire <laughs> um that's which i did not opt for it um as it wasn't available at that time. Yep. Um, but I can still fit a full size spare in there. And that's crazy. Not. And also there space. is a drain plug down there, which I have taken out. You can still fill this up with ice. Yeah, Rivian really made this with a lot of storage. Right. Whether it's right behind the rear seats, right back here, the right. front. And if I didn't have this hose reel, this will actually open up all the way 90 degrees up so you can pull the tire out okay. uh, with ease. Okay. Um, I use it to carry my track tires for the Model 3, you know, yep. when I go to a track, tow this thing to a track and whatnot. All right, well, let's look inside. Yeah. All right, so we're in the rear seats yep. now. Yep, so we're in the back seat. You know, we've got a screen here. They'll eventually update this to have more functionality, supposedly video play and what, what, almost like what Tesla's doing today. Um, currently controls HVAC, so you can turn on or off the airflow, uh, switch airflow from vents, top or floor, and turn, oh, that's on, cool. yeah, turn on the rear dome light and the outer heated seats. So the outer heated, or outer seats are heated. Um, here you got the cup holders, a little bit of storage space, but also you got access to your gear tunnel right here with oh, a that's crazy. cover to close it up if you want to. Okay. Um, wow, that's cool. awesome. And then on the driver's side, you got some under store, under seat storage, um, which I've utilized. Um, some towels, some gloves. Yeah. On yeah, the passenger side, it also does lift up, but it is um, housing the Rivian's Meridian um, sub subwoofer. Oh, cool, yeah. cool. That's awesome. Yeah, tons of storage. Yeah, I saw a lot of storage. But yeah, and then you can see out the back window. Right. You got the back window. Very clear. You got speakers up on the headline, on roof. One there. And then actually like a full, almost yeah. like panel. Full panel, roof. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. All right, let's take a look at the front. Yeah. We got, yes. oh yeah. Oh, yeah. and then and USB-Cs, right? You gotta, yeah. you gotta charge our device. Of course. Right? <laughs> we got one, you got both in the headrest, got one on each side and two on the on the main screen here as well. Okay. And one tens underneath that screen. Up front, um, yeah, you know, you got the dual display, got an instrument cluster. And this is uh, pretty much where you can control the majority of the truck. Yeah, we got our maps, right? Maps, music, yeah, you know, EQs and whatnot, fun stuff. Our four wheel drive selects stuff, on road, off road, select our trailer. Be able to towing and stuff. Yeah, towing, it's awesome. U hauls, U -haul, oh, yeah. Um, it shows what your range will be at 100%. The, the vehicle will actually calculate how heavy your trailer is and map out uh, or calculate how much range you'll have left wow, or what your range will be at 100%. Um, you go into off-road settings, um, you get different functions. You got all-purpose or all-terrain, rock crawl, soft sand, rally, and drift. You got your ride height control, you got your regen control, you got your stability control, and you got your ride feel. So ride feel is changing it from soft to stiff. Um, this is the new update to Rivian also. You get to see your uh, power output. So essentially, which wheel has power, which wheel has slip, regen, and all wow, that. That's... And you get to see your steering angle input, your yeah. pitch, your pitch and roll, your tire pressure, your motor temp. And when we switch back to on-road, these two actually switched out for trip, trip and battery temp. Oh, crazy. And okay. there you can see your elevation and your compass. 
so for those that that love adventure and off-roading tim just gave you a full walkthrough he's got so much experience with taking this off-road i mean i i wouldn't even know what to say about my cyber truck with all these options if it has even yeah. some of these so for the on-road you got all-purpose conserve this conserve is only for the dual or for the quad motor you got sport and snow mode um oh crazy okay yeah. and then ride height you know, all that same and here you got your cameras since all or since the doors are open um you do have a panoramic view so i close the door yeah so we got a better pano, pano view of where we're standing right now you can see cyber truck um and you can switch it out to see your tires where what your tires can hit when you're off-roading oh and then wow. you can switch the view to the rear and you see the same thing um, but this is also new to Rivian's update recently is now you can see your bed. Oh, so you have crazy. a bed cam. Now. Had that cam camera never been turned on really before? Um, from delivery, it was not turned on. Um, it was recently turned on probably around Thanksgiving, if I recall. Um, but yeah, crazy. Um, and then you got your energy page. This is what your range is projected as you're driving. Um, this range is pretty accurate. I've pushed it and has many others. Todd <laughs> Connor from our spec, you know, he's pushing his Rivian. And yeah, I, I want to say that this range is very accurate. Yeah, no, that's important. Yeah. See, charging summary, um, how long I've charged, you know, all that stuff. Where's power's going when you're charging? Yeah. Um, see, what else? Got your phone, gear guard. Gear guard is essentially sentry mode for yep. Rivian. Okay. Um, you can see we're out on the road. We got the front front cam, side cam, rear cam, bed yeah, cam. Yeah, that's, that's, oh, look at all those. That's yeah. cool. And it's a fish island, so you get full coverage, essentially. Yeah. It's a weird look, but it gives you full coverage. Yeah. And um, camping, obviously, you know, most of us, a lot of us that have electric vehicles like to camp. What Rivian has done with camping, with, with camp mode essentially is turn a lot of this into, okay, yeah. <laughs> you, you can do so many things um, as of right now. Uh, recently they've made flood mode or flood light as an option. So your mirrors, outside mirrors where your turn signals are, that will illuminate white. Um, if you turn the lights on, you can turn display off. Courtesy camp actually makes a lot a lot of the loud noises quieter so like air compressor for HVAC um, turns off nice. the lighting sounds locking so essentially crazy yeah um, energy usage you want to be able to shut off to conserve power remain normal so it turns on and off as it goes on throughout the day or leave it on at all times this is your power outlet you want to turn on you can set it for how many hours or how many minutes you want for up to three days and it will turn off when the timer goes off or when the range drops to 30 miles. Level truck. This is probably the coolest feature Rivian has come out with. For those who camp in the vehicle or have a rooftop tent and you're at a campsite where say the ground isn't level. Oh, that's right. This truck, the truck will actually awesome. level out. So you have a level playing field <laughs> that can sleep on a level ground. Yeah, that's crazy. And as for HVAC, this is very similar to Tesla. You know, you got control your H, your airflow. Um, you got heated steering wheel, heated seats, cooled seats for front and rear. Or actually, front gets cooled seats, um, rear gets heated seats. There are glove box too. No glove box. Um, the reason why there's no glove box is because of the airbag position. The way they designed this, they, the airbag kind of takes place of glove box. But under the seat, you got some storage space okay. on both sides. You can fit some glasses, keys, whatnot. Okay. Uh, iPhone Max yep. will actually fit in there. You got cup holders that stores right there. Underneath that, you got a camp speaker, which is currently locked. Is it right here? Uh, yeah, so this, this you can see where the storage is. Yep. And then under the center console, you got a pull out speaker. <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> that comes with every R1. Wow, um, that's crazy. Yeah, you can that's charge really your phone cool. with it. Under here actually becomes an ambient lighting. Oh, um, cool. So you can have this as like when you're at a campsite and whatnot, you know, you've got some ambient lighting. Okay. Um, night lights. 
center console. This actually is a wireless charging pad also. Oh, cool. Um, and you got some storage in here. It's pretty deep. I got a lot of stuff in there. Rags. Rags <laughs> and whatnot. Two USB-Cs in here that actually can charge your phone or connect an SSD and yep. whatnot. You got tons of storage under here. Yep. Um, earlier Rivians actually come with a 12 volt plug under the dash. Now they don't. Um, why they remove it? I don't know. Um, ignore the receipts. These are from my operating chips. Um, <laughs> And yeah, cool. got some controls here, steering wheel controls, controls your mirrors, um, and volume, autopilot, or as Raven calls it, drivers plus, um, and whatnot. We got more speakers, the pillar, the dash. Let's come around on the driver's side. So as most Rolls Royce comes with an umbrella in the door, Rivian gives you a flashlight that is actually a thousand lumens and charges in the door. <laughs> it's the small things. It's the small things, yeah. <laughs> Smaller things. Um, but yeah. yeah. And then how much range, so this is the quad this launch the quad, edition. Yep. How much range does this have? So this is projected for about 280 miles in the all-purpose mode, 300 in the conserved mode. Um, I've gotten about 250 just because I, this. I don't really run these wheels. Um, I have another set of wheels, more aggressive tires. So, you know, as you add things to the truck, you're gonna lose the range. Um, add bed racks, lights, whatnot. You know, you bring down the aerodynamics, um, more aggressive tires. Um, but I can comfortably get about 250 miles. Um, so overall, what are the biggest positives and maybe one or two negatives? Um, I gotta think of that. <laughs> Well, what do you love about the truck? Uh, what I love about a truck is, I mean, the user usability is probably the best thing I've gotten. I mean, I, I came from Ford Raptors, Tacomas and whatnot, and I, I think this is the best adventurous vehicle out of the box. Um, you got air suspension. Isn't really the best suspension for off-roading, but Rivian made it work. Yeah, I, I think the only downside is I wish the bed was a smidge bigger, but for what it is, I think it's it's fine. What I'm doing with it, I think it's fine. Um, I love how much storage there is. Um, and but. and uh, for some quick history, because we love some history, actually I gave Tim his first ride in a Model 3 Performance, and he had a Model 3 Long, long range, range. Rear wheel drive. Rear wheel drive and a Ford Raptor, <laughs> I think after the, after yeah. your drive in the Model 3 performance, you sold the Raptor. I sold the Raptor, <laughs> got the Model 3, and... And then this. Much, yeah, <laughs> this. Awesome. Well, thank you for your time yeah. and uh, for just walking us through this beautiful truck. Yeah. All right, so we're hanging out with Chris. He is a huge EV enthusiast. He has a F-150 Ford Lightning standard range, which we're gonna get into, yeah. but quickly just tell us a little bit about yourself. And then it's been a big week for Ford owners, uh, really electric vehicles in general and Rivian owners. Yep. Um, so we're gonna do a quick walkthrough on your adapter, but just quickly tell us a little bit about yourself and then walk us through the differences between the standard range which we're looking at right now and then we're going to be taking a quick look at the platinum edition yeah so i'm chris i'm one of the co-founders of the bay area lightning club uh, i also do the turn down for what podcast so listen in when you have a second for that the big difference between the sergio spec that you'll see and the standard range that i have is it's a, a little bit more basic so it started out at, at 69,000 when it was released in 22 uh, it doesn't have the sunroof it doesn't come base with blue cruise that's an add-on uh, it also doesn't have some of the uh, advanced speakers that you'll see that's better sound system that's in the premium the platinum they also have massaging seats and other kind of things but for the most part it still has the leather interior it still has all the basics that you would have it doesn't come stock with the uh, tow package so that means my towing ability is, is less it also doesn't have the extra coolant and thermal management that the platinum and the extended ranges have it also can only charge AC at 48 kilowatts whereas the big boys can do it all the way up to 80 kilowatts so that's the, wow. the primary difference okay and then you even uh, shout out to Tony Pham 
right? He made the, the artist. Best, yeah, <laughs> the artist. Legendary. Yeah. First but, non Tesla, what the frunk, I believe, that's been done. So <laughs> thank you, Tony, for hooking me up and with then this. How many miles of range should it be rated at? And what are you getting real, real time? Yeah. So it's rated at 230. Um, I can get being in the Bay Area with commute traffic and where I'm driving, I'll get up to 270. Um, but that's because, again, the commute traffic doesn't let me go very fast. Now, if I head down I 5 and, and head down to Harris Ranch, I'm getting close to 190. And then if I'm just doing a back and forth to Sacramento and back, I can get about 210 if I keep it right at 70. Uh, now, if you get up to 75, again, on I-5, you're going to drop that. I, if I moderate my speed, I can get 210, which will get me to Sacramento and back on one charge. Well, thank you for just showing us uh, the difference between the standard range and the Platinum and really real time what you get. And also, too, yeah, if you are in the Bay Area and you have an F-150 Lightning or want to check out the Turn Down for Watt podcast, make yeah. sure to test uh, to check those out and we'll post the links in the description. So it's been a big week for F-150 Lightning and Mustang Mach-E owners. And Chris is going to tell us why. Why was this a big week for you guys? Yeah, I mean, the charging network, as everybody knows, uh, is really rough for folks that aren't on NACs. And so this was a huge thing. You know, shout out to Elon and, and Jim Farley, who really spearheaded this. And everybody's followed in line since. And they've given us these prototype adapters for some of those that are in the early access program. And these are essentially exactly what you're going to see on the Magic Dock. It, it's designed and engineered by Tesla and then distributed by Ford. Uh, it is free for the next few months if people get their orders and reservations in. Last I saw, it was backed all the way up to August currently. Uh, I was one of the fortunate ones where they let me use and test a prototype. And you can see that it is DC only. It is not going to work with AC. It'll work on a V3 and V4 chargers, uh, not the V2s. And it basically has all the different safety features you're going to want. So it's got the clip here that if this gets unclipped, it'll disconnect and stop the charge. Uh, the pilot signal will get will get severed. And then here is uh, the clip where the NAX will plug into this. And this will not allow you to unclip it for safety once it's plugged in and into the truck this cannot move so it's locked in it's very safe uh it's nice you can see that it's sealed waterproof no screws it's a really great design anything from tesla is always going to be really elegant and well done so this will just allow a uh, plug-in charge with ford you plug the nax cable into here this goes into your truck it recognizes handshakes and it it's off to the races the only drawback is if you're doing member pricing you've got to do it through the tesla app um, otherwise, you're not going to get that member pricing. So you're going to have to disable plug and charge and then go to the Tesla app to get your member pricing on those supercharger rates. Yeah. And this is a big, uh, big step for Tesla's mission of getting us to a sustainable future. And so allowing other electric vehicles into the system is going to be huge. And most importantly, um, this is a big step really for, I would say, for electric vehicle owners. They can have a reliable. Yeah. Uh, network uh, that we as Tesla owners get to enjoy. So now they get to benefit from that. So this is a really exciting time, I think, and really a, trans a huge step forward in transition. It's been less than a year since I think Jim and Elon yeah. announced it. So Sergio and I both were on that call with Elon, with Jim, uh, that spaces uh, thing that they did on X. Yeah. Um, and I'll, just, I'll be remiss if I didn't also mention, you know, while you have the opportunity, just the um, making sure the etiquette of going into these Tesla superchargers, it's really important that we're aware as Lightning owners of um, where we need to park and how we need to park. So I was at one yesterday and it allowed me to back in just like a Tesla would because it was a V4 terminal. It had the extra length. And so that really worked out well for me, but there's going to be locations that don't have that. And so you really, as a Mach-E or Lightning owner, need to go to the far right side and look for opportunities like up in Placerville uh, where they had the magic dock. When I would go there, I would park on the far right of the terminal and that way I didn't take up the extra space. So be aware. And if you're pulling up and there's already a Mach-E or a Lightning there, park right next to them. And that way you're really minimizing the impact. Look at the app, look for the opportunities. If you see a supercharger station and it's totally full, that's not gonna be necessarily the one that you wanna target, right? Gonna take patience and it's gonna take a lot of people just being aware. Part of this whole movement in this community is being respectful and just being out there and building that camaraderie. And part of that means that if we show effort, I think that's gonna be better received as Lightning and Mach-E owners than if we just go in entitled uh, and not respectful of the foundation that's been laid by all these Tesla community folks that have been there doing this for years. So I feel really, you know, excited to be able to do this, but I'm also very aware of what I'm doing when I'm pulling up to work. No, that, that's really helpful, especially as like, a lot of cases, this is really opening up the doors to uh, Ford and Rivian owners right now 
And so that etiquette will be important. But I so, yeah. Thanks, Chris, for your time today. Yes. Thanks for giving us a quick rundown. Um, again, make sure to check him out. We'll post the links in the description. All right, so we're here with Sergio, who is a big EV enthusiast. He has driven trucks, Model Xs, Teslas across the country. He has an, a Ford F-150 Lightning Platinum Edition. Um, so we just saw the standard range, uh, but just tell us about the Platinum Edition. Uh, what's the pricing on it, potentially for someone who's buying it today, and what's your range? So for the Platinum Edition, you're talking about the, it depends on where you start at but starting for the platinum edition you're talking about 91,000 so 91,000 for the platinum edition range on the platinum is 300 miles wow okay tell us a little bit about let, let's start getting into it tell us about the frunk let's let's do a full walkthrough yeah so the cool part about the platinum it identify you can identify it really quick because our grills are painted so they're they're that shiny painted instead of the flat matte like all the rest of the editions. Um, your frunk is massive, this super frunk that I actually can sit and lay down in there if I want to, <laughs> has four outlets for the 110. You have the type C, you have the type A, uh, and you could simply push that button and turn on the power to it and wow. supply whatever you need to supply. You have a lower compartment, which also has a drain hole, so you can put some ice, some drinks, whatever you want in there. Yeah, and this is, I think this is the biggest frunk, right? Yeah. Out of all of them, out of all the, the EV trucks, right? Yeah, I, I don't think any other trunk can, you know, throw throw a whole human body or three in there. <laughs> <laughs> the Platinum Edition also comes with 22 inch tires and wheels. Yeah, those are beautiful. So of course it has a Platinum on the, the door, so the charger door, so people can see that you have the Platinum. And this is the highest end. There's no nothing higher than this, No, right? and this has every single option you can think of. So that's, so when it comes to the Platinum Edition, they added the wheels, they added the painted grill, the seats are different in this one. The um, sound I mean, system too. The sound system. I mean, you're, you're talking about 16 <laughs> speakers. They got speakers <laughs> in the head, in the, in the headliners, they got speakers just everywhere. If you if you love music, you're gonna be immersed in it in um in this uh, in this model. So another cool thing about the F-150, just on the outside, um, the Lariats also do this, where it you do have your power tailgate that you know goes down. Don't mind the extra crutches, just just in case I lose the ones that I got now. This one, you could either push the button to close it underneath, or even if you just grabbed it and said, you know what, go up. Wow. You know, so automatic, so you don't have to put a whole lot of effort into into getting it closed, or you just simply use the button. So this could tow 10,000 pounds. Wow. But everything is is automated yeah. on this thing. They make it so that way you can you can feel the luxury as well as having truck as and well. And then, um, is the tonneau it's tonneau cover automatic as well? No. So Ford doesn't. I, I, not that I know of that they have any automatics. This is a Retrax aftermarket edition that I had gotten. It's pretty cool. It's like it's also metal. It locks up, and so. I just wanted to have some kind of extra security on mine. Yep. And then also too, one last question. I know we're not completely getting in the bed. Is there any power outlets in the trunk oh, too? Oh shoot, my bad. Look at that, missing the Or hole. any extra storage? Miss it, no, no extra storage back here, but for as far as power goes, we do have extra power back here. So on this side over here, what we have is that. we have our are 110s, so you have uh, four of those back here, and then you have your 240 right here. Wow. And simple as pushing on the button to turn it on. We also have, you know, lighting for the trunk on both sides. So if you push the button back here, we have our tie downs, um, and you could go light or bright on these things, which is pretty cool. Yeah, that's awesome. And then I love how it just, you throw it up and it goes up. So on the Cybertruck, you have to actually push it up all the way. It does have the soft close, but it doesn't uh, do the auto up. Yeah, you know, one thing about the Cybertruck that I do like is that it's low enough and you can set the setting low enough to get up in there with the Lightning. I couldn't jump up there if I wanted to. So what I would have to do is I would have oh, to use our, our built-in step and then our handle. So I have a handle that I could grab wow. like this. And even being on crutches, I can still get up here. Wow. So because of the that extra handle, but if the truck would have been lower, which I wish these would have had, you know, suspensions kind of like um, the Cybertruck or even the the Rivian where you can use the, the system, it would be kind of cool. Yeah, look at all those extra safety features that it has. All right, we're gonna take a look inside. All right, so we're in the back of the Ford F-150 Lightning Platinum. So pretty cool. I haven't peeled off the, the <laughs> this little- This is so new. <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, you, if, if, if you want to pull that off just so you can have like that moment, go ahead and pull it off. Just <laughs> I don't want to take that moment from you, look, man. Look, just, just peel it <laughs> off, man. Look. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Okay, we're breaking this thing in today. Look at that. <laughs> so the cool thing about the um the, the four trucks as well, they have a lot of cool storage features in the back of them. So wow. we actually have a bin back wow. here. This bin is collapsible. So if you wanna you know not have not have all this stuff and you want to actually slide things down you could actually just pull these tabs collapse the bin i keep my destination tesla tap charger in here um i have a tire kit i have a couple of battery jumpers in case i got to give somebody a battery jump that's out and stuck somewhere but um our tire kit is behind the back seat of that side over there okay. so it's pretty cool we got look at this even more storage down and here. even more storage we have another 110 outlet back here you have your type C or A, and you got heated seat options back here as well on the on this model. And then two cup holders. So there's almost like four cup holders back here. That's a lot. Well, of... even in the door. Oh, jeez. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there's tons of storage. I mean, you know, this is definitely. Uh, and then it's got the nice, nice sound system. It has the Bang and Olsen sound system, which is pretty cool. You have these pretty cool shoulder. Um, support so these can actually click to where you like them you pull them forward oh. or you go back to where you like them so you can you know adjust how you, however you see fit this one just also has a different polished look on the on the insides the the piano black um, you can see the tweeters here you can see tweeters up in the top um, the sound system like I mentioned in this one is just it's, it's a different level yeah you can see the tweeters there even up here you said there's like 16 speakers in here. Yeah, something. 16 Jeez. speakers, man. It's just speakers everywhere. And another cool feature about this one, which um, let me turn that down. The another cool feature about this one that um, Chris doesn't have is this one. You actually have massaging seats. <laughs> so for you, you can sit there and you can be on that side. I mean, get all Jeez, this. This is gonna be uh, <laughs> the new masseuse. Man, it's actually pretty cool. You just you sit there and um, I can go to seats right here and massage i can go to passenger i could be like hey give him a massage give him a full recovery massage he's gonna oh. feel that in his back he's gonna feel it on his buttocks and you can increase the intensity of where you want it and wow I mean, yeah i'm feeling that that that's awesome so it's pretty cool you can do it for the driver or passenger and especially when you're cruising and you're in blue cruise and you're just like enjoying the ride you're just you're getting that little massage too another cool thing about these that um these seats i'm gonna show you real quick hold on stay right there the, the cool thing about these seats as well is because it's a truck and you might want to have a little bit of comfort and take a nap or whatever, these seats actually go all the way back on these things. Uh, so these have the what? lie flat seats. So, so you, I, you know, I got to ask this question. Have you actually slept in here? So, <laughs> or <yes>. maybe, <laughs> yes, I have. No way. Look this at how is, flat this goes. Oh my. So what? I slept in this when I went to King of the Hammer because I wanted to go what? have the experience of what it is to the off-road life. And Tim and I was out there. Oh my God, Rivian. And um, yeah, so people brought their tents. Some people brought other stuff. I brought my truck wow, because I have my seats. I have the heated. I had the massage. While they were in their tents, I was sleeping on my seats with the massagers going, heated seats, just enjoying life, man. And then my big old, you know, sunroof, like, oh my gosh, huge roof. Yep. Oh, with the wow, shade, so you can all the way back, and it goes further. Check that out. Wow. Yeah, so, that's crazy. Yeah. So looking at this out in the middle of the desert, you know, enjoying the stars, like it was, um, it was a pretty good time. Yeah. Uh, this thing also has self parking, so you push that button, and you could tell the vehicle, you could tell it that you need to have parking assistance. And the cool thing about it is. You could either have parking assistance to get into a parking spot or get out of the parking spot. So let's say you park and some people park way too close to you. You could hit parking assistance and say, hey, get me out of this parking spot. The vehicle will take over for you and pull you out of the spot and then let you take over once it's out of the spot. Awesome. Yeah, that's that's just so much utility. I mean, I think that's the perspective that also Ford was able to bring to this because these their, their trucks are amazing. And to, to think about all of the utility um, and luxury and oh it's, you can get here now yeah so if you want to work on this right here if you want to put your computer out and have a little work desk station there you go simple as that yeah that's crazy your shifter goes down your shifter comes back up
That's crazy. And then it's got some outlets here. You got a 110 here. So if you want to plug in, so if you're doing your laptop while you're at the workstation, you have your 12 volt plug. Yep. You have your trailer, built-in trailer controls. You have pro trailer. So this one will actually back up your trailer for you if you have a trailer. So you um, have your trailer hooked up and you want to go in a certain direction, you literally just use this button and the vehicle will turn the steering wheel in the direction that you're, talk, you're, t you're doing the toggle to make the trailer going. So you're not doing one of these and doing one of these and going yeah. back and forth. It's like, it's it's simple as turning a knob. That's That's crazy. Um, what has been your perspective on software um, as a Ford owner? Um, since you've owned it, has it been a, something, because as Tesla owners, it's just something we probably benefit the most from just because it's a software first based company. But what has your experience been like? Um, especially you've had Teslas, you have a Tesla. Um, what has been the, if at all, has it been a big adjustment, a good adjustment? Um, well, yeah, you definitely have the differences of Tesla's uh, software where it's snappy, it's quick, it goes into it. Ford's has definitely come a long way, but it, it's it's that early adoption, trying to figure it out. I appreciate the way that they're doing their OTA. So you're getting updates, you're getting different, you know, um, features in your vehicle, but the software has been pretty good. I mean, considering where they are in, in the age in these EVs and being early on into the game, I mean, they're showing that they're committed into making things work. And so far it's it's been pretty cool. I mean, like before we can see live charging data, like with my Tesla, I could tell when I'm going to a Tesla charger, how many are available, what, what speeds they are. Ford added that not that long ago into ours called Charge Assist. So now we can actually have that live data instead of just pulling up to a station and being stuck and not realizing that all of them are full or they're broken or whatever the case is, like I could actually see that live on the screen. Not only that, but now I can see the Tesla charging stations that I can use as well with my adapter. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's great to see. I think my opinion is that Ford um, out of the legacy auto is they're pioneering the way for everybody else. They're leading it. And, uh, it's, it's awesome to see, especially too, you know, you're an experienced Tesla owner and, and, and jumping over to Ford cause you have three Fords right now. Got three Fords right now, but I, <laughs> but I still have a Tesla too. Exactly. So. No, I know. Uh, yeah. I wasn't sure if I was going to get that right, but, um, no, this is, this is awesome. I, and I'm enjoying, <laughs> right now. I don't know if I want to get out. Uh, yeah, this is this is all, all right. So Sergio is just gonna tell us what he loves about the truck and maybe one thing that could be better about the truck. Yeah. So as far as love, I you know it, it's, I'm so mixed on it because there's a couple things I love. I love the ride. I like the smoothness. I love the comfort. That frunk is pretty amazing on it as well. The only thing that I would recommend that Ford would would do with these is some adjustable suspension. Like give us the option to be able to raise this thing up, lower it down. Um, stiffen it up, you know, just get us some adjustable suspension. I think that right there would have made all the difference in the world for this truck. Well, awesome. Thank you, Sergio, so much for your time, um, for just getting your reaction to the Cybertruck and then giving us uh, a full walkthrough of your F-150 Ford Lightning Platinum. Uh, that was awesome. And then we may even get your driving reactions <laughs> to it. So You know what? I do have one more. I need them to tap the cameras on these things and make them work like how Tesla's work with Sentry <laughs> and um, dash cam. Like, that's what they need to do. Yeah. I need that. That's my biggest gripe. <laughs> there you go. All right, Jim, you've heard it. <laughs> heard it straight from Sergio. <laughs> All right, so you've seen the Rivian R1T Quad. We've also seen the Ford Lightning Platinum. We're going to take a quick look at the Cybertruck now uh, and give you a quick walkthrough. So this is the Cybertruck Dual motor it's got about 320 miles of range but that's specifically because of the tires that are on this um, but the rated range is actually 340 so it really depends on uh, the tires and rims that you put on it um, I'm gonna open up the front um, I do have a pizza and some other small things in there so you just go in and you press this button right here uh, that allows you to open it and this actually can fit uh, two uh, two carry-on items um, it doesn't seem like that, but out of all the trucks, I would say this is probably the weakest spot. Um, there's only one spot up here to, uh, to close the actual gate itself. Uh, but it does make it nice. Again, I have a, um, a, a medium sized pizza here. I got my backpack, got the gloves, of course. Um, so let's, let's go ahead and close that. Um, and it, it's an automatic close as well. So let's just kind of come around here again. These are the stock. The stock wheels that come on the truck, um, 
the the covers um, are in recall right now so it's not they'll be sent to me later um, but again with these these type of tires uh, you, we get about 318 miles of range um, so we're gonna come to the back now um, and there's three three triggers here uh, open close for the tonneau cover which is right here the gate itself will be thrown down you can see that here so we have some stuff in the truck in the truck bed right now we were doing some stuff earlier and then the tonneau cover you just push up a little bit uh, so there's this extra storage right in here um, and it actually has uh, something you can pull a you can actually put beer and water whatever you want in here um, and then there's actually a drain down there so Makes it really nice to keep stuff cool. And then um, I'm gonna ask you to come around because uh, there's two 110 volts and a 220 uh, right here. Uh, what's awesome about this, we actually were able to charge a Ford Lightning F-150 earlier. So this makes it super capable. Um, you can also charge your house from this. Uh, I'll be setting that up later, which is pretty cool, but um, a lot of versatility. And then it's got the, obviously the rack here on both sides with the ambient lighting, which allows you to, um, if you don't want stuff to move too much around, it allows you to stop it um, as well. Um, so um, let's just put down back the tonneau cover. You just press it a little bit and it comes all the way down. And this thing's built, uh, it's built with a lot of strength. Um, so I can stand on it. It can take up to 300 pounds. Uh, it's, it's no problem. I have had a bunch of people stand on this. So um, it's got a lot, of, a lot of strength to it. And then you can do the, um, the soft close here. You just put it in. Um, and then we're gonna come around here. I'm gonna show you how to actually get into the Cybertruck. Uh, this is the charge port if you wanted to just see. Uh, it's got the NAX with it, but uh, this won't work at third-party stations just because of the converter or the uh, adapter. So it's only gonna work at Tesla superchargers right now um, just because it's it's so deep in uh, with the adapters. So both uh, the front and the back work the same way. Um, obviously, as long as you have your key card, all you have to do is just press in. And what I really like about this is if if I just hit it, it's not gonna close. So I have kids, they're gonna put their fingers in here, it's not gonna matter. Um, but yeah, if we open it up, um, makes it really simple. This is at uh, low mode, um, makes it really simple to step in. And again, um, the big thing to notice here against all of the other trucks is just that there's no stocks. So that's very Tesla fashion, there's nothing on the sides. Everything is through voice command or, you know, the windshield wiper, the lights, the left and right blinker, uh, the speaker, all that stuff are going to come through here. Um, and then it's got the phone chargers right here. Um, I had a Coke earlier. It's got the cup holders. Um, it's got a little storage cap in there and there's an actual outlet in there. So you can, you can plug something in. Um, but yeah, super, super, super versatile. Um, and I think all right so just another quick view I just want to show the actual the glove box so we're just gonna pop this up tap to open this and you can see here there's just you know this it's kind of small but it's got a nice uh, glove box right there for you to be able to use um, but I think the other big call out is just the amount of space down here um, again it's been used we've done uh, about 2,000 miles in a week on this thing uh, but this was advertised as a six-seater and so there's just a ton of Ton of room down here so uh, if you need any storage uh, it's gonna be really nice to have um, and then again the other big details here against the other trucks that you've seen is just the long windshield it's got one windshield wiper this is the longest windshield wiper um, ever put on a vehicle so um, actually I think we might even be able to look at that saw it in action right there um, but yeah so you don't you don't want your head to be able to um, be right there because it's gonna hurt probably. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's go take a look at the back now. All right, we're gonna open up the back again. You just push the white button right here with two fingers and it opens up. And this actually opens up to a full 90. Um, but the thing that I love about the back seat, it's it does have the actual uh, back screen and you can do music. You can do all of your, uh, your, your kids' favorite videos. It also has two USB ports down there as well. 
Um, and then again, you can adjust up and down. It's all kind of standard now with uh, a lot of the EVs, especially with the back screen. You can adjust the, the, the side up or down um, as far as the where you want the actual wind to, to go. That's what you call it. But here, you can press pu pull this out and the seats, the seats come up. So you can see all of this, the, just the space that you get from that um, really just makes it nice um, and more rugged to just be able to, to kind of get whatever you want in the back. So that like, again, that's a high level. I haven't really, um, I really haven't gotten into the software, um, but at the end of the day, um, you know, uh, you were able to see the Rivian R1T quad. You were able to see two F-150 Lightnings, the standard range and the Platinum. And then we took a quick look at the Cybertruck. Uh, but obviously because you're on my channel, you know, I'm not gonna go through the software right now, but let us know down in the comments. Uh, is there something that changed your mind or something that stuck out to you a little bit more about some of the other trucks? Uh, but overall, um, you know, I was, I was really happy with being able to get to know some of these other trucks a little bit better. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, Tesla's mission is about sustainability. So it's important that every truck that's uh, gas off the road is um, another right step in the right direction. So um, hopefully you were able to get a full walkthrough today. Uh, let us know which one you prefer.